Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. Um, you know, I wanted to start before I introduce Gabe and talk about him a little bit. I wanted to uh, discuss our search process, and that's something that um, you know I know there have been a lot of questions about that throughout the month, and um, you know for a variety of reasons uh, we we didn't talk publicly about it, but I wanted to kind of um, fill everybody in on on how the month progressed. Um, so. This is not a joke. I would say within two minutes of our announcement coming out uh, that we were reassigning Pete, um, <laughs> all of our phones were blowing up with texts and phone calls from a variety of people throughout the industry with recommendations on who the manager should be. And uh, we ended up taking that whole first week after the season was over to um, you know, collect names, gather names, um, start doing background work on these candidates to try to whittle our list down to a more manageable number, um, while at the same time uh, asking different people throughout the industry about their own experiences going through a managerial search process. Um, as you might imagine, different teams have very different styles and how they've conducted their, uh, their searches, and we you know, spent some time trying to navigate what we thought would be best for the Phillies. That second week after the season was over, we began our interviews, and we interviewed several uh, internal candidates, as well as um, had, a, had a number of phone calls with, with external candidates. The initial interview group for the Phillies uh, consisted of um, Brian Minitti, Joe Jordan, Ned Rice, and myself. Um, as we got into week three, we conducted a, a number of interviews, again, with, with outside candidates. Um, Beginning in week four, we met with ownership to brief them on the status uh, before we uh, completed a, f a final round interview with three candidates. Um, the final round interviews were full day interviews uh, that involved 30 different members of the Phillies, uh, ranging from ownership to Andy to Dave Buck, uh, members of our scouting department, player development, uh, R&D group, I'm going to miss some here, I'm sure, but our medical group, our clubhouse staff, our PR staff. Um, and I think that was really important. Uh, it was important for a few reasons, but in my opinion, the major league manager has uh, the ability to connect an entire organization. And we felt it was extremely important uh, for whoever the manager was going to be to spend time with many people in the, with the Phillies that they're going to now work with uh, and to establish that connection right from the very beginning. Um, I will say that as far as candidates interviewed, we're very pleased with the quality of the candidates. Everybody did a remarkable job. I'm extremely grateful to uh, the teams, the other the opposing teams who were very accommodating and very flexible with us about allowing us to, to speak with their employees. Um, but really, at the, as, the, as we were reaching the the end of the, the process, it became very clear that there was one person who had separated himself and he was the right man to lead uh, the Phillies into the future. And that person is Gabe Kapler. Gabe Kapler, uh, a few things I'm going to say about Cap. Uh, number one, he's incredibly prepared. And that came through in the interview process. Um, it came through as we talked to, uh, to people throughout the industry that either played with him or have worked with him or players that have worked, played for him with the Dodgers. Um, if he brings the same level of preparation and grit uh, to the Phillies that he brought to the field as a player, uh, our fans are going to love this guy. Number two is that he has a unique ability to connect with people. And again, we saw this in the interview process, but we've also seen this uh, in, in, in our talks with, with people who have been around him in his career, um, he can connect with players, he can connect with the media, he can connect with the front office. He has a very unique ability to do that. And I think that's going to bode very well for, for our young roster. Um, number three is that he's a progressive thinker. And I know much has been made about this, but I know I would, I would advise that, you know, we look at the teams that can just finish competing in the World Series. Look at the teams that competed in last year's World Series. These are among the most progressive organizations in baseball. I don't think it's a coincidence that the, those are the four teams that have played in the World Series the last two years. And that's, that's where the Phillies need to head, and I think Gabe Kapler is going to be a huge asset to us as we, as we try to progress to the future. Um, and finally, and I think this is important to highlight, um, you know, Gabe has an extensive resume of experiences. You know, as a minor league player, 
12 seasons in the big leagues. Um, you know, he took a year off in the midst of that to, to manage at the minor league level. I was rehabbing an injury. Um, he played in Japan. He's worked as a member of the media. He's been a farm director. This guy brings an impressive resume of baseball experiences to the table. And it's for all those reasons that I think he is going to be a terrific fit to manage the, the Philadelphia Phillies moving forward. So please join me in welcoming the new manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, Gabe Kapler. You. you got it. Congrats, man. Look at your jersey. This is incredibly exciting. <laughs> Even if the process of putting on the jersey is a bit slow. Yeah. that P. Let's put this thing on. Feels really good. I feel more comfortable in a baseball uniform than I ever did in a collared shirt. This feels right to me. So first and foremost, Matt, thank you for those, those kind words. Um, it's certainly makes me feel more confident just to hear your confidence level in me. So before I say anything else, thank you for, for saying that. I'd like to thank immediately um, John Middleton and the Buck family, Andy McPhail, and just one more time, Matt, and everybody that was involved in the process, and the entire city of Philadelphia for believing in me and giving me this opportunity that I take extraordinarily seriously. I think about this franchise and I can't help but think about a history of excellence and a history of winning. And that immediately makes me think about some of the people that I watched growing up. Mike Schmidt comes to mind for me. Certainly Larry Boa and his ferocious style of play. And without question, just thinking through Charlie Manuel and his contributions to this organization in this city make me very proud to be even mentioned to be a contributor like those guys were. I think about some of the guys that followed them, that I played against. And the guys that come to mind for me are, are Ryan Howard and Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. And I was lucky enough to get to know Chase a little bit in Los Angeles, and I saw him prepare in the clubhouse. And it was unbelievable how much intent and how much intensity that he prepared for the game with, and during the game, how much effort he put in. He led by example. And that's how we're going to play baseball with the Philadelphia Phillies going forward. We're going to play with that same level of intent and that same level of intensity that Chase played with. We're going to make razor sharp turns around the bases. When the ball enters the hitting zone, we're going to be in powerful and athletic positions. Before the game begins, to Matt's point earlier, we are going to prepare, 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 so that we've thought through everything and we make strong, well thought out decisions. We are going to hunt for value at the margins. We're not going to leave any stone unturned to find our competitive advantages. We're going to think traditionally, and we're going to think progressively. We're going to mold those two things together. And all of this is in an effort to bring that effing trophy back to John Middleton. <laughs> Ultimately, that's why we're doing everything that we do, because we care deeply about winning, and we are ultra competitive. Thank you. I don't know if we can go to commercial after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Dave, as Matt mentioned, you have something in common with most of the people in this room. So as a former member of the media, if you'd like to ask the first question of the media, we'd you know, certainly give you that opportunity. That sounds like a, a reasonable way to go here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have microphones on either side of the room. Uh, and if you would, please raise your hand if you have a question, and we'll get a microphone over to you. Hi, Gabe. Obviously, you've been an executive with the Dodgers. You've been a media member. You, you've written. You've done a lot of things. Obviously, you, a very intelligent guy. Uh, why do you want to be a major league manager? 
I, I think I alluded to it just you know a few moments ago. I'm ultra competitive. I love to win. Um, this is a, a place where I can lead from the dugout. And certainly one of the things that I think I'm especially capable of doing is building environments for players to be the strongest version of themselves. And one of the things that, that we've talked about is we don't actually build the baseball players, we build the environments for the baseball players to flourish and develop. And if we build a really healthy environment for them to come to the ballpark in every single day, they're going to be the strongest versions of themselves. And then we're going to carry that strength out onto the field and perform. So I guess to, to wrap this up, the reason I want to be a major league manager is to build, is to build that winning environment. Ryan? Matt, uh, obvious back here. Um, the, the one obvious thing on Gabe's credentials that, that is missing is coaching experience at, at the big league level. And, and as you alluded to, he managed for one year at the minor league level. How, how important was that in the grand scheme of things, having a, someone that, you know, with that kind of experience in the dugout? You know, Ryan, as part of our search process, we, you know, we considered and then ultimately interviewed candidates with a, with a wide spectrum of backgrounds, some, some with significant major league managerial experience, some with less major league managerial experience, some with none. Some, player, some guys that were more recently off the field than others, um, you know, pitching backgrounds, hitting backgrounds, et cetera. So uh, all that was done in an effort to really try to understand, um, you know, what the best fit was going to be for this franchise. And we went into this with a very open mind. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, what, what we conclude is, is that the total package that the cap brings to the table here um, is the right fit for this organization at this time. And, you know, you're right. You know, he, he's, he's limited in his major league uh, you know, experience on the bench. But there are things we can do to help support him in that area. Mike? Uh, for Gabe, um, your blog is interesting and diverse reading. Um, I'm wondering it, what place and what value do you feel um, exploring non-baseball areas can have within a major league clubhouse? I really appreciate that question, Mike. I think it's a smart one. Um, certainly, there's been some stuff out there um, in some of the, the posts that have been up that don't focus on leadership and teamwork and development and building a strong unit on the field and then also strong players off the field. But one of the things that I encourage people to do is, is dig into some of that content. There's a lot of it that, that I'm uh, particularly proud of and think in a lot of ways I wrote to our players uh, with the Dodgers organization and in a lot of ways directed them to, to now the Phillies players coming up. Like, I knew that I was speaking to athletes. I knew that I was speaking to young men. And I continue to believe that in many ways I hit the mark. Um, you know, I wrote some of that stuff several years ago. And I'm in a different place now and have different kinds of responsibilities now. And right now I'm focused on winning a World Series with the, the Philadelphia Phillies. But a lot of those things still apply. And I can't tell you how many conversations some of those blog posts sparked between me and players and staff members in our organization and inspired incredible conversation and really important thought. Jim? Matt, did any of those blog posts give you reservation or pause? You know, I mean, we, we went through them pretty thoroughly. Um, I would say this, Jim, you know, part of, you know, I realize that this is somewhat unique, uh, you know, in a major league manager and definitely unique to the, to the Phillies, uh, but, you know, that's part of what we're embracing here is, is Cap's willingness to, to ask questions and to, uh, you know, to, to move the organization forward, to, to try to be more progressive and, and as he said, to hunt value on the margins. And, um, you know, if you look at any great leaders, you know, they're going to have both succeeded and failed in their lives. That's just, a, you know, that, that's, that's generally true of all successful leaders. And I think, you know, to, to really achieve and to really excel, you have to be willing to take risks. And, you know, I think Cap has been more, um, you know, vocal about it or his, 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 you know, his thoughts are in the are part of the public record more than they are for some. But I think that's something that we embrace. I don't think it's something to shy away from. Megan. Uh, Gabe, your intensity and conviction has obviously stood out so far while you've been talking here, but how would you describe your personality and how do you think it's going to fit in with um, what's a pretty young clubhouse? 
Megan, I think that's a good question too. And, and I think my, my personality is multifaceted, just like every other human being in this room. But I'll say um, I'm engaging, I'm warm. There's no question about it. I'm intense and I'm passionate. And I think that more than anything else, I am who I am and I'm authentic. And our players today follow authenticity more than anything else, any other characteristic. Bob. Uh, Gabe, where are you? A little bit to your left. Thanks, Bob. Where, where are you in general on a strategic philosophy? Are you a small ball guy or are you a big ball guy? And do you think that uh, in the last 10 years, sort of strategic ideas in the game have changed? And where do you see them going? Where do you think those changes have been recently? So I think that from a strategic perspective, and where I come out on strategy is to find every bit of information, whether it be traditional information, small ball information, big, big ball information, medical information, strength and conditioning information, just every little detail of how prepared a player is to match up with another player, and then make the decision with all of the information. I don't have one specific strategy, nor will I ever have one specific strategy, but I can tell you I will take the opinions of the other men in, the, in that dugout to make sure that I get a well-rounded view of every situation in particular and then make the best decision for the Philadelphia Phillies for the moment. And that strategy might change from one game to the next. Howard. Matt, were there, you expressed that there were no reservations with some of the things that you saw uh, that Gabe had written on his blog and had tweeted. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if you said there were none. There are none, and as far as Gabe, Gabe, are you proud of some of the stuff you said you expressed yourself? I don't want to get specific, but uh, I'm people in the room, there's an elephant in the room if people like, hear. I mean, coconut oil is a, is a phrase. Uh, I threw it out there. Gabe, any reservations? And then Matt, any reservations? Gabe, for putting it out there, and Matt, while you were in the interview process? I'll take it first. Uh, certainly, like, like I mentioned before, much of what I have written is, is several years old. And when I was writing that, I was in a different mindset than I am now as the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. Even with that said, if you look through the various posts, there is some tongue-in-cheek stuff that I had directed to players because I thought it, it might make them laugh. Thinking through it, you know, there's some things that I might have written a little bit differently. Certainly we all make mistakes and, and miss the mark from time to time. But if you go back and you look at those posts, they were meant for, for health. They were meant to help people be more prepared and, and stronger. And so they're imperfect. I'm imperfect. But I'm also very proud of a lot of the content that I would encourage people to go back into and, and dig into and, and find the stuff that really does hit the mark. Yeah, and I would, I would, I agree and support, uh, agree with and support everything he just said. But I, I would just kind of repeat what I said earlier. You know, I think as we try to move the needle here, as we try to move this this organization forward, um, you know, some of that is there, there's there's an element of uh, you know risk and new behaviors and trying new things that that is that's inevitable. And I think that's part of what we are excited about with, with Cap's arrival here is that this guy has demonstrated that over the last handful of years with the Dodgers with a tremendous amount of success. And um, I think, you know, we can't project exactly how the next few years are going to play out, um, but, but boy, oh boy, it's, it's going to be fun. And, and I, as I said to Jim's question earlier, we are, you know, we are going to embrace a lot of his ideas and we're going to collaborate on them as we try to as we try to push this thing forward and, and bring that championship trophy back to Philadelphia. Howard, I think the elephant left the room when the A's left Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, Matt? <laughs> Matt? Uh, Gabe, I'm curious, how do you get a, a clubhouse to buy in on thinking differently or thinking progressively? Is that the biggest challenge you think you face, uh, or at least in spring training? It's one challenge among many. Uh, I'll say the way you get players to buy in is to come on their turf. And I think historically in a major league baseball clubhouse, we've looked at it in the opposite fashion, which is these guys don't know how to do it anymore. 
So, you know, we're going to wait. For, we're going to stand over in the corner and be quiet until they come to us. Well, they don't respond to that. So the way to get them to buy in is to relentlessly, relentlessly care about them. And one of the ways to do that is to come on their home turf. And their home turf might be texting. That might make people uncomfortable, but it doesn't matter because we have to connect with them. And if we're going to sell them ideas, we have to be talking to them in their language and be willing to use their language, even if it makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable. So if that's text, if it's Twitter, if it's other various ways to get to them, if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And once we have their ear and their attention, and they're, they're caring about us and we're caring about them, that's when we can sharpen. That's when we can turn the dial up. That's when we can ask for more intensity. So the way we connect with them and the way we get them to buy in is to come on their home turf. Mike? Uh, what do you think of, of all your experiences so far? What's, which one is best suited, do you think, to make the transition to a manager in this league? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Of all your past experiences at different levels as a player, as a coach, executive, which one do you think best suits you to make that transition to a manager? Great question. I would say leading our player development system with the Dodgers. So one of the things that I would point out from an experience standpoint is we led 250 men from coaches to players to strength and conditioning staff, to medical staff, to clubhouse staff, to rookie ball guys in the Dominican Republic, all the way up to big league players. So I think that constant communication, and that constant communication, like I said a few minutes ago, was text messages, it was phone calls, it was FaceTime, it was FaceTime audio, all day, every day, learning about human beings, learning what makes human beings tick, leading and guiding those human beings, that experience, I don't know where else I could acquire it with that larger group of people. Todd. Uh, Gabe, uh, what kind of coaching staff do you think you, right here, what kind of coaching staff uh, do you think you need? Uh, do you need, because of your lack of big league coaching managerial experience, do you need like an old grizzled pitching coach? Uh, are you more comfortable, you know, how do you see it playing out? Have you made job offers in that regard? And also, uh, can you talk about your, Background in analytics, I know you wrote for Baseball Prospectus. How did you get involved in that and, and seek it out and learn it? Sure. Starting with, with staffing. You know, quite simply and directly, I believe in, in building diversity. One of the things that I don't think, and I, I have a feeling that, that I'll get support from Matt here, is I don't want seven people in our dugout that think just like me. I value somebody with a lot of veteran experience, have a tremendous amount of value for somebody who thinks more progressively, a guy that has been out at first base and, and picked out tells on a pitcher his whole life can teach me so much and I want to be able to drink that up. So I'd say diversity of thought, diversity of experience, that's a strong way to build a major league coaching staff. As it relates to analytics, I have just a natural desire to dig into objective information. It doesn't mean it's the only thing that I apply from a decision-making standpoint. But I do like evidence. And I believe, based on the way players behave today, that they like evidence too. Because if we don't provide it for them, and they're asking for the reasons why, so why are you asking me to drive my back knee towards a, a firm front side? Or why are you asking me to pull down with my index finger to create more backspin? And we don't give them the answer, they're going to go find it. They're going to find it from their guru in, the home t in their hometown, and maybe that guy will be able to provide the answer. So it's our responsibility to be well-versed and well-educated so we can educate them when they come to us asking why. I think why is a really healthy question. And so I think we should ask our players, keep asking us, man. Like, we'll, that's what analytics is. It's evidence. Let's come up with some evidence you know, to prove why we're asking you to do something. Well, we're reaching the bottom of the hour, so we'll take two more, uh, Mike. When you look at the roster as currently constituted, what stands out about this team from what you've seen so far? Oh, my goodness. I, so in preparing for our major league, for the, the managerial search, I dug into the roster in a pretty deep way. I think what's most attractive and exciting is we have core position players. I'm not going to name names, but like all around the diamond, we have some really already successful young pitching. We have some bullpen pieces that in, in looking into them, I got really excited about 
And it wasn't just about performance. It was about pitch characteristics and movement. And I put myself in the batter's box and, and thought about facing Luis Garcia and how difficult that was going to be. And it just got me fired up. I looked through our, through our prospects and our minor league system. The guys that we have coming, extremely, extremely talented. This scouting department has done a tremendous job the last couple of years. These guys are almost ready. Joe Jordan has done a tremendous job in player development, preparing some of these guys to make the move to the big league level. So, I mean, I don't know what, what there isn't to be excited about. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Do we have holes to fill? Of course. But is there a ton to get fired up about? I mean, that's why Matt and I are sitting together right now, and, and we'll be smiling a lot. All right, we'll take two more questions. Howard? Uh, Gabe, I'm, again, I'm asking these questions to try to, to get past everything that we've heard and we know. Can you give us any background on the, the suit that Nick Francona filed against you? Again, I'm just trying to get all this out and past us. Not a problem. Totally understand why you're, you're asking the question. So per, per Major League Baseball, it's not something that we can address specifically. I will say this. Uh, I've known the Francona family for a long time and have a tremendous amount of respect for them. And in particular, Tito Francona was my manager for several years in Boston. And I still hold him in the highest regard and think of him as a mentor. But as it relates to the specific, the specific question and the specific situation per MLB, it's not something that we can address. Time for one more question, if anyone has a question. Tom? I was wondering how important... Just, just a moment, please. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, this is for Gabe. I was wondering how important it would be to uh, you know, get a veteran or veterans to kind of buy in and be that conduit between you and the you know, younger players. I think, it's, I think it's awesome to have veteran leadership that can help police the clubhouse. And you know, I've talked a little bit about my experience in Boston, and I think in part because there's so many cool similarities between the city of Boston and the city of Philadelphia. Uh, but we had some guys who were excellent at policing the clubhouse, and Tito Francona put a lot of, um, gave us a lot of responsibility to look out for the things that just weren't acceptable in our clubhouse. So I think those veteran guys, like, you know, I think back to Jason Veritek and Trot Nixon and, and some of those leaders and, and even Orlando Cabrera when we acquired him at the trade deadline. These are guys that, that were instrumental in winning the World Series. So are they essential? Not sure. But are they additive? 100%. Matt, thank you. Gabe, thank you, and again, thank you. welcome. Thank you. And thanks to all of our friends in the media. It is such a beautiful day today. I wish we were playing a baseball game, but uh, second best, we're talking Phillies baseball. There's nothing better than that right now. So thanks again, everybody, for coming.